In 1990, Nintendo held a competition to see who was the best at NES, and it's amazing that even today, almost 30 years later, this contest is still so well remembered. Nintendo actually held a number of tournaments back in their earlier days, although for some reason, this one has stuck in the forefront of people's minds, and I believe that that is because of the holy grail of video game collecting, as whether you're a collector or not, you most certainly have heard of it, the Nintendo World Championships cartridge, which was given out to some of the contestants in the tournament as well as to a select few through Nintendo Power. Today, the few cartridges which still exist have been skyrocketing in price, but for those of us who are not able to get our hands on the official one, there is the reproduction from RetroUSB.com which has you covered. So in today's video, we are just going to be taking a little bit of a look at this reproduction, seeing what comes inside the box, because there's actually a couple of interesting items in there, going over a couple of things about the game itself that you probably do not know, and then concluding with a complete playthrough of the 6 minutes and 21 seconds of the Nintendo World Championship. So, let's get started. So the first thing that we have here is the box. Of course, the original Nintendo World Championships never came with the box. The gold version actually doesn't even have a label. It's just a sticker glued to the front of the cartridge because it's not something that was ever meant to be mass produced or anything like that. This box actually looks quite nice uh, and it definitely has that retro NES feel to it. Even the screenshots on the back have rounded edges and it just overall gives you a summary of what the game is all about and lets you know what to expect when you pop the cartridge in. Again, a very nice piece, not something that had to be concluded considering that the original never had it, but it's still a neat thing to own. Overall, what we really want to look at though is the game, and it comes in a clear sleeve that says Retro Zone on it. Overall, it's a very nice looking and high quality sleeve, and it makes me wish that Nintendo would have made some clear ones like this as well, as it's really awesome being able to see your game through it like that. Uh, and here we have the cartridge itself with its kind of clear blue design and unique reproduction label. The switches on the front are actually not in the same position that they were on the original cartridge. Uh, of course, the original cart, they were in the top left, but they've now have been moved down to sort of the center left to ensure that no one can just kind of swap the cases and pass it off as the real one. And the position of these switches actually determines the amount of time that you get while playing the game. That is not something that can be changed within the game itself, but those switches determine that, as we will see in more detail when we look inside the instruction manual. So just like with the box, the Nintendo World Championships actually did not come with a manual, but this just kind of gives you an overview of what you can expect, and again, it's very well done and very reminiscent of official NES instruction books from back in the day. So on the controls page, it mentions the very important fact that you begin the game by pressing start on the second player's controller, so you will need two controllers to play this game. Also listed is what the different switch positions on the front of the cartridge do as far as time goes. The official time used in the competition was 6 minutes and 21 seconds, although you do have the ability to increase or decrease that by rearranging the switches. The following page gives a summary of the games that you're going to be playing, but I don't think that we really need to go into too much depth with those. Most people probably are familiar with Super Mario Bros, Rad Racer, and Tetris. And then after that, we also get some information about some of the contestants who took part in the Nintendo World Championships, particularly Thor Ackerlin, who many consider to be the overall winner of the tournament for achieving the highest total score. Following that, there is actually an excerpt from a letter that another contestant named Richard Ambler sent to the person who bought his personal copy of the NWC in an auction a few years back, and he mentions some of the tricks and tips that he used to score well in the tournament. I think that these are things that are not general knowledge, so I definitely wanted to share them all here before we play the game ourselves, where we can actually try out a couple of these things. The first one is that in Super Mario Bros., when you collect 50 coins, you then go on to Rad Racer, although depending on what level you collect your 50th coin in, that determines the difficulty of the Rad Racer track that you play in the second round. Finishing the Mario Challenge on an odd number level, so basically any level that ends with a dash 1 or a dash 3, will send you to a Rad Racer track with less aggressive computer racers than if you complete it on an even numbered level, so either dash 2 or dash 4, you'll then end up in the same track, but the computer players will be much more aggressive. That's definitely something to keep in mind when you're playing the Nintendo World Championships, and it's actually a reason that many of the contestants would just collect 50 coins on the first level, even if it meant having to die a few times and then recollecting coins, because they didn't want to collect their 50th coin on the second level of Mario 1, as they would then have been taken to the more difficult Rad Racer track. There was also a trick regarding Tetris, and that again in Super Mario Bros., depending on the multiple of 100 points that you end the challenge with, 
the predetermined pattern of blocks that you receive in Tetris will actually be different. Many people probably think that when you get to the third round of the Nintendo World Championships, the Tetris round, that the blocks you receive are random, but you actually do have a say in determining what blocks you get. The minimum number of points that you can accumulate in Super Mario Bros. is 10,000, due to needing to collect 50 coins at 200 points a piece. But from there, you can calculate ways to increase your score to another multiple of 100 by stomping Goombas or collecting points in other ways in order to gain access to the Tetris block pattern that you want. Ambler recommends trying to get either the 10,300 or 10,400 point pattern as he considers those the sweet spots where racking up a big score in Tetris is its easiest. But again, this is likely something that many people who play the Nintendo World Championships are probably not aware of. Otherwise, the back of the manual actually just shows a couple of cheats that you can pull off with the Nintendo World Championships. One that requires the Game Genie, and one that is actually just a controller input that inserts a clock on the screen, which is rather neat. But overall, this manual is just a lot of fun to look through. It's not something, of course, that again was ever included with the main game, but still a pretty neat piece. The other item that comes with the Nintendo World Championships of reproduction is a reproduction of a poster for the tournament that would have been around back in the day and it just has the well-known logo of the tournament on the front with the gold trophy in the background. Again, it says at the bottom that's a reproduction, so it's not something that's going to get confused as the real thing. I suppose the inclusion of it, of a poster like this, is kind of just a throwback to the official boxed NES games from way back when, which usually included a poster kind of showing the games that were out at the time. So overall, I really like this reproduction. I'm not someone who's usually a fan of reproductions, like you won't find the reproduction of Little Samson or something like that in my collection, but the Nintendo World Championships is more of a special thing, and it's not something that I'm probably ever going to get my hands on. So I think that a reproduction is a very good way for anyone to experience the competition if they have never done so. What we're going to do now though is pop this thing into the NES and play with the official time limit, so the full 6 minutes and 21 seconds of the competition, just to see how well we can score. So get ready for some Super Mario Brothers, Rad Racer, and Tetris. And here we are with the gameplay. So this is the screen that you are met with immediately after turning the game on, and it will remain on the screen until the start button is pressed on the second player's controller. This can be played on the original NES or the AV Famicom as you can plug whatever controllers you want into the front of that thing. However, it cannot be played on the original Famicom because the second controller on that has the microphone instead of the start and select buttons. So without further ado, let us jump right into the game in three, two, one. And that brings us right into this kind of instruction screen here, which is completely custom. It's even playing a little bit of a custom tune. It's really obvious that Nintendo put some serious effort into this competition cart. So we have 99 lives to collect 50 coins in the original Super Mario Bros. 1. It's really neat seeing the Mario 1 live counter at 99 like that, because normally that's something that would never be possible in the original game, due to the fact that once your lives hit double digits in the original Super Mario Bros. 1, usually it starts glitching out where the tens digit is replaced with that kind of weird crown symbol, uh, so it never actually displays double digit numbers correctly. And I guess they give you 99 lives as kind of a failsafe, so that there's no possible way that you could get game over and you'll be sent who knows where, who knows what would happen if you actually managed to hit zero lives. Uh, what we are doing right here though is we are employing one of the tricks that we discussed earlier on in the video, courtesy of Rich Ambler, where we are going to be collecting all 50 coins for this challenge within the first level of Super Mario Bros. 1. That will ensure that when we get to the Rad Racer challenge coming up next, that we are taken to the track with the easier computer racers. Just overall though, it's smart to get all of your coins in the first level because it saves time, because you don't have to deal with things like the flagpole animation, walking to the castle animation, and even the walking from the castle to the pipe that takes place at the beginning of 1-2, all of which just take up some serious time. The other thing that we are trying to do is hit, or uh, finish rather, this challenge with either 10,300 or 10,400 points. So there we go, we just managed to do it, uh, because again, as Ambler said, those will take us to one of the predetermined Tetris block patterns in the third round that he thinks are kind of ideal for getting the highest score possible. But with Mario done, we are now moving on to Rad Racer, where the rule is just to get to the end as fast as possible. And of course, we can do that by holding up, holding A, getting up to 255 kilometers as fast as we possibly can, and just trying to stay there for as long as possible. 
Uh, the way that the total score in the Nintendo World Championships is determined is that in the first round, any points that you get in Super Mario Brothers are multiplied by 1, any points that we get here in Rad Racer are multiplied by 10, and then the points that we get in Tetris are multiplied by 25. So you can definitely see how important it is to kind of just get through the first two rounds as fast as possible because it's that score being multiplied by 25 in Tetris that is really going to either make or break your chances at winning. Of course, we have to, you know, do all of that within the 6 minutes and 21 seconds uh, of the official time. Uh, the same as was used in the official tournament. And in that tournament, the highest scorer was Thor Ackerlin, who had about 2.8 million points at the end. Uh, and I don't think that we're probably going to get too close to that. My personal best is around a million, but we're definitely going to, you know, give it our best effort and see just how close we can get to being the Nintendo World Champion. Down at the bottom there, you can see the S and the G for start and goal, with the arrows kind of indicating just how far we are between them. On the front of the cartridge, there are those switches, of course, which we discussed, which can change just how long the, the competition lasts. But I wonder why there's so many different comp uh, combinations, considering that only the 6 minutes and 21 seconds was ever actually used. It's rather curious. So you, you would think maybe there'd be like a switch for, you know, infinite time, and then maybe a switch for the official time, but just all the different combinations, I've always kind of wondered about that. But, you know, we should probably actually be focusing on what we're doing here, as we're almost at the end of the race. We haven't had any wipeouts yet, which is actually really surprising me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a rare day in Rad Racer when I don't go flying into one of the palm trees. And I haven't practiced this at all ahead of time, so this is kind of just, you know, we're doing what we can do here. And there you go, the Rad Racer challenge completed, and that's our score multiplied by 10. So, here it is. This is the one that's going to, you know, to be the big thing that's going to determine exactly how we end. It's Tetris, and again, this is one of the combinations of blocks that Rich a um, Ambler says is ideal for racking up points, and so far it's looking pretty good. I wonder how exactly these were determined, like did somebody go through and they were like, okay, these are, you know, the ideal blocks that we should put in, you know, so that people can make Tetrises, or I just wonder what the, uh, the mentality was behind creating these kind of block patterns, but okay. There. So far so good, you know, the more that we get those longer, four block long ones is good. Hopefully this keeps up. I'm definitely not the Tetris master. Back in my prime, I could usually get to about 160, 170 lines in mode A consistently, but it's been quite a while since I have had, you know, a good sit-down play of Tetris. Okay. Kind of need to do a little bit of thinking ahead here. Hopefully we don't put ourselves into a position where, you know, there's no good place to put a block. Well, again, so far, we're not doing too bad. We've got ourselves a good number of Tetrises so far, but yeah, that's that's kind of, you know... Sometimes you just put yourself into a corner like that where the block has to go in a place that's not ideal. Hopefully we can bounce back from it, though. But although hitting a kind of snag like that definitely you know, puts a damper on your momentum. Hopefully we can kind of... You know, still score fairly decent, despite the fact that we're not getting too many Tetrises, but we're not getting too many of the longer four-block long ones either which is kind of concerning. I'm not sure why this would be such an ideal thing if you're not getting too many of those. Although we do seem to be getting a couple more here. And we have another one. Well, unfortunately, not really any good place to put that. Hopefully we can kind of start building back up from here, though. Yeah, we've made a couple mistakes. Hopefully you can kind of correct ourselves a bit now. Again, I mean, it's not like, not like we're actually trying to get like a world high score here. This is meant to be more of a display than anything, but I'm taking it super seriously. I mean, why not? It's just, this is a really fun thing to do, and if you've never played the Nintendo World Championships yourself, I highly recommend it. Thankfully, it looks like we're kind of in, back into a good position here, though, where we can kind of just do some stuff. But what I really want to do here is kind of just throw some blocks away and try and get that one last Tetris, because we're not getting any of the four long ones. This is a strategy that they would actually employ in the tournament, is just throwing things away. No! <laughs> no! Oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. Oh, I'm not exactly sure how it worked in the original competition. Like, was there a clock that showed how much longer they had? Because I did read that one of the strategies that the contestants would employ was when the time was getting down there, just throw away the junk blocks and try and get, you know, those last couple of Tetrises that you've, uh, you know, built up. Get those last couple long, four block long ones and get any kind of Tetrises that remain. But again, I had no idea how long was left, so, ugh! 
That really hurts not getting that last Tetris, but there you go. We got almost 600,000 points. Would have been a lot more than that if we had got that Tetris, but overall, hopefully that gave you a good idea of just what the Nintendo World Championships is all about. With some practice, I could probably do, you know, quite a bit better than that. And, you know, this is actually making me really want to kind of dive into it. I don't know if there's really much of a competition scene out there for the Nintendo World Championships anymore. Everything's about speedrunning, not really about, you know, competition carts. But you know, this is definitely something I would, if, if there's a community for it, maybe I gotta look into joining that, but I have no idea. But hopefully you enjoyed seeing all about the Nintendo World Championships, enjoyed seeing, you know, learning some new secrets about the game, enjoyed seeing what the actual gameplay was like itself, and then even enjoying seeing a little bit about what the reproduction is all about. Uh, it will stay on this screen forever now until the game is turned off. So yeah, it's kind of like one of those NES games where like you watch the credits and it will say presented by Capcom and you're not sure if it will just stay stuck at that forever or if something will actually happen, but this is unfortunately the end. So thank you very much for watching, I hope that you enjoyed that, and I hope that you will join me next time when I look at more retro video gaming stuff. So thanks, and see you later.